Hi guys! Once again, this weeks video is only happening because of the fabulous Dundas models provided in the kits, so that's nice. Like Coach 4 completing the Vintage Train, these open wagons are the last I need to build to complete the wagon line up seen at Wharf a few months ago. These use the same underframes as all the other Chorus and Talithlin wagons, which includes the incline, splay sided, wooden bodied and slate, so I'll start by cutting the pieces free from the spur. You can see the additional axle boxes on there, but I won't be using them for these wagons. I'm planning to make wagons 4, 11 and 17 today, so having photos of the prototype to hand really helps. Liquid poly is the best glue for these kits as it's essentially a liquid plastic cement. The wagons are simple to build, so I won't show the entire build here. I've done plenty of videos of these now, so you can go and find those. This particular wagon has brakes, so one of the central rivets needs slicing off with a sharp knife. The brake housing can then be glued on with liquid poly. An easy mistake to make here is to make it central between the axle boxes, but actually it's offset. The body is only four sides, and they're fine as they are for this wagon, so that one's done. Wagon 17, however, has smooth body panels with no additional strapping along the top, so this needs removing. I decided the easiest way is gently taking them off with a file. The plastic is really easy to remove, so be careful not to overdo it. The wagons can then have cotton buds attached to the underside prior to painting. I finally got some superglue activator, so that's the route I've taken with these. Two of these wagons are grey, so they'll have a few undercoats of Humbrol grey primer through the airbrush. And the third, gross wagon, being red and brown at the moment, has an undercoat of red oxide primer. The colour of these primers are actually really close for these particular wagons, which makes things much easier. I then realised that the gross wagon has additional strapping on one side, and I didn't like the idea of trying to get a perfect match with the one already here, so I sliced it off, and added three new straps out of styrene strips. Being plastic, liquid poly was obviously back on the bench for this one. They look too basic as they are at the moment, luckily I have rivet decals by Archers to beef them up a bit. If you haven't seen these, these work in the same way as normal water slide transfers, so they're soaked in water until they can be removed from the backing paper, then they're slid off onto the strapping. They actually have 3D texture, so they look really nice when they're on the wagon. To seal them in, another couple of coats of red oxide primer is sprayed over the wagon. Over to Wagon 11 now, and it looks like I've continued this week's theme of missing details off the prototype. And now I'm slicing off even more rivets off the underframe. I have painted the wagon, but as they're such tiny details I can touch them up with a bit of matching paint, hopefully it'll be undetectable. And whilst at this point you would think I've learnt my lesson, I feel I haven't. So let's see where that goes. As is tradition on these wagons, the metalwork needs to be picked out in black, and that includes the brake system. You may have noticed that I haven't attached the brake lever itself, and I think I mentioned why I do this in a previous video, but since this clip is quite long, I'll tell you again now. It's much easier to paint details and weather the wagon without the brake lever on, and as it's simply black, it doesn't lose anything from not being on the wagon. And as it's simply black, it doesn't lose anything not being on the wagon during the process. The axle boxes are usually fully black, but Wagon 11 at the moment only has the centres picked out in black, which I'll label as a controversial look. Yes, I prefer the look of fully painted axle boxes. Like these bad boys, and full marks to you if you're actually paying attention to this extremely specific and dull information. Wagon 11 has TR axle boxes, whereas the previous had chorus axle boxes. To be fair, even with the size of these, they're actually quite hard to paint to a tidy finish. 
I'll probably spend more time painting these than any other part of the wagon. The rivets are also quite different these days, and feature what look like square plates, which are also painted black along with the other metal details, so I'll attempt to paint these in. Have you ever attempted to paint a perfect square about 1mm wide and deep? Well I've tried it just now and I couldn't do it, as you'll see in this somewhat blurry footage. But I worked out a process. Step 1. Paint the black in as good as you can, which, spoiler alert, won't be tidy. Step 2. Go in now with the body colour. I went round each side of the black. Doing this on all four sides will leave it with nice sharp corners. No, it probably won't be absolutely square, but at least it looks more crisp than just using the black. Moving over to Wagon 4 and I need to add the yucky brown underframe. It's such a shame that the volunteers at the TR weren't allowed to strip it back to wood and just varnish it. Oh well, at least it's protected. The easiest way to do this with a nice clean join between the red and brown is with Tamiya masking tape, or similar quality tape. I'll add the brown using the airbrush in a couple of coats to build up the colour without having it too thick around the details, which can obscure them. I can then remove the masking tape to bask in my lovely paint job. Oh, what a surprise, I've screwed up once again. I guess I should have sealed it in with a decal fix or even a coat of varnish. The Talithlin paint the wagon interiors black these days, and I have devised this technique for painting these up. It starts with using masking tape to form a collar around the interior. You may need to make sure that you don't let it overhang on the sides as it may block the paint being sprayed down onto it. Then turn the wagon upside down and slot on a piece of toilet paper that I've gnawed a wagon sized hole into. This can then be pushed down onto the masking tape to seal it on. This wagon looks so good now it could be ready for NHS quality surgery. The airbrush is then used to spray the black in. I try to get a good covering of paint in the corners first and then fill in the sides and the floor, as if you do the sides before the corners, the paint gets attracted to the wet paint and avoids the corners, or something like that, I don't really know, I just do it like this and it works. Ok, on to transfers. I'm using a number of different types to get the job done here, since the prototypes has varying sizes of lettering and numbering. And to be fair, I pretty much get all my lining, lettering and numbering decals from Fox. The smallest numbers here are something like 1 mil, and they're super fiddly to work with, they are tiny tiny. I keep the surface of the wagon wet as I remove the backing and adjust the numbers into their final resting place. These larger TR letters are, I think, 3mm, but the font is heavy so they appear quite large. The extra size makes these pretty solid and are quite forgiven when playing around with them. This wagon actually has different lettering on the front and back. One side has the TR for the Tatlin Railway and the other has YMG for the Young Members Group. Obviously I'm going to honour that gorgeous hand lining they did with transfers to reflect it. I start with the M in the middle to get good centering. And then added the Y and a G to equal distances either side. You can really see that keeping the transfers wet really helps when I'm trying to match up three separate pieces. You could spend hours adjusting them but it slowly starts to give you tunnel vision, so watch it. All three wagons are painted and numbered, so on to weathering. And before we get to the black wash, which you're obviously expecting by now, I want to add a bit of a rust stain that I found on the wagons when I was at the railway on New Year's Day. This weathering powder is orange rust, and it's quite vintage now, I was given a batch of weathering powders by a work friend when I started out in the hobby about 15 years ago. To make it look like staining I didn't want to use dry powder, so I made up a mix of powder and a drop of water to make a runny paste. It's important to get the consistency right as I found it to be rubbish if it's too runny. So I'm actually applying this like a thick pin wash, starting around the end details. I'm following my reference photos for where I need to add it so it's at least somewhat realistic. 
I'm not a Russ fanatic, so a photo telling me exactly where to put it is key. You may be panicking about the look of it at the moment, as am I, as it looks like a toddler's mouth after they fed themselves with a yoghurt, but bear with me. Before it starts to dry, I'll use a cotton bud to wipe it downwards. I'll keep doing this until it leaves a faded, stained appearance, and when that's dry, I'll add a very fine amount of fresh rust along the panel join. You'll notice that the week's theme of doing things wrong is continuing right to the end of this video. For the first time ever, for some reason, the black paint isn't adhering to the surface of these wagons. I have no idea why, as it's the same paint I always use. I'm working it into the paintwork and it's just not given an inch. I decided at this point to clean it all off and add a coat of satin varnish, which really helped, so let's crack on. I've done this a lot through the Tatlin project, adding a black wash to what is essentially very nice clean items of rolling stock in real life. But the wash really does give a level of realism that I feel is lost on a clean model. That being said, I'll continue to dilute this black down further and further until it's almost acting like a pin wash between the details and panel joins. I use a paintbrush to absorb the wash away as it begins to pool at the bottom. I've left it for a few hours to dry now, and it's time for the final layer of weathering. And that'll all be on the interior. This is coming in the form of powder washes again. I'm using a darker brown rust here, first applying the powder, and then using a very wet brush to wash it into the corners more. The colour changes a lot as it dries, so this process can be a bit bitty and clunky as you work towards the finish you're happy with. At this point I noticed that I'd missed a paint detail on the YMG wagon. The paint runs down the internal walls. I thought this would be an easy job, but it wasn't. Making tiny lines look like paint runs is not something I'm very good at, but hopefully it passes when you see it. The interior still looks too clean here, so I did a final pass with a weathering powder called Europe Earth. This is an off-white and when brushed in it gives a really nice weathered faded look. The excess is then blown out. The wagons are pretty much done so the wheel sets are popped back in. The axle boxes are opened up before, as this is my tradition, so they turn freely. If they don't turn freely first time, I like to wiggle the axles side to side inside the axle boxes, which seem to help mould them into the shape with the pinpoint on the axles. With the wheel sets in place, I can now finally add the brake gear onto the relevant wagons. This needs to be placed correctly between the wheels or it will literally act like activated brakes. The final piece of the puzzle is the brake lever. This has been primed and the rear is quickly sprayed with a black. Doing this means I only have to paint the front face of the lever, saving the risk of getting black all over the wagon's bodywork. They're glued on with super glue, as using liquid poly on this wagon now would ruin the paintwork. The black is a simple black acrylic primer by Miniature Paints. But as it's a primer, it'll key onto the brake lever well, so less chance of me rubbing the paintwork off as I handle the model. I did decide to go over it again with the black poster paint here as the black was very black, which makes it look a bit toy-like. The black poster paint is so matte that it gives a nice weathered look. That's about it, isn't it? Well, three wagons isn't bad for a week's work. They're all very different, which I like. One of the things that I find makes an interesting layout is the varying liveries between the stock running. So these wagons should add that extra level of interest if you ever see the layout at a show. My main tip this week would 100% be to make sure you've got your reference photos to hand. I know I keep banging on about this, but I think people slip into modelling other people's models and not real life. Or even something they assume something looks like, but it simply doesn't work like that. 
The personal details that make the final model look so interesting will only be seen if you investigate the prototype. And that's my opinion, obviously. It's up to you, isn't it? It's your model, if you're happy with it, that's that. So thanks for watching, and once again thank you so much to Dundas Models. I wouldn't have got very far through this Tatlin project without their help. If you're interested in giving these kits a go, go and check out the Dundas Models website. I guarantee you'll be impressed. I guarantee it. Cheers.